Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hopefully you're doing well. New fragrances coming our way once again. It's time for another This Week in Fragrance. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about some scents that you're gonna be able to pick up here in the very near future. Got a new Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Got a new Hugo Boss fragrance. We got a new Low DC fragrance, a new Davidoff Cool Water. And to top it all off, the fragrance everyone is looking forward to the most, a new Kenzo Ohm. No, actually nobody's probably looking forward to that, but it's coming out anyway. So let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Let's go over these fragrances. Let's go over these note breakdowns and see what you have to look forward to. I'm gonna kick it off with the new Cool Water from Davidoff. This one was just announced, just now. And there is almost no information whatsoever yet. It's Davidoff Cool Water, Grapefruit, and Sage. So this would look to be your yearly summertime cool water flanker. And so far the note breakdown is just that grapefruit and sage. Yeah. So I don't have the write up from the brand yet. And the picture of the bottle right here is very plain. <laughs> Davidoff really not trying to do too much here. Legitimately just putting grapefruit and sage in tiny type at the bottom of the bottle. Then there's also a version for ladies, which is cool water, jasmine and tangerine. I'll let you go ahead and guess what the note breakdown is on that one. But yeah, that's what we got coming our way. A new cool water, grapefruit, and sage. Look for it at a discounter near you in the near future. Next up, let's talk about that new Isimiyake. It's their summertime low DC flanker that we get every year. Just like cool water, you know they gotta put these out at the same time. Inspired by memories of summer, three perfumers and an artist invite us on a journey and show us the summery world of Low DC Pour Homme, a limited summer edition for men. They say that the, the fragrance is inspired by multiple places, Algiers on Algeria's Mediterranean coast, with streets lined with pine trees and jasmine, Italy, with a lemony breeze gently wafting through aromatic basil, eucalyptus, and cedar forests. And then finally to the Portuguese coastal region of Alentejo. Did I pronounce that correctly? Alentejo? Where the salty breeze of the Atlantic meets the warmth of the cypress trees. The result of these three stops is the aromatic woody Lodic Porom. And they also have artist Kevin Lupert, who presumably designed the bottle and the box and everything. You never really know with these limited edition summertime flankers how good or how bad they're gonna be until you get them in. The problem with the summertime flanker for a fragrance is a lot of times the brands are maybe not necessarily putting their best foot forward with them. Sometimes you get something great, to be certain. Sometimes you do, absolutely. But a lot of times it feels like they're just kind of popping it out there. They're gonna get those, those sales really quickly for that year and year only, and then they're gonna cut it, move on to the next and just do it all over again. Because there will be a lot of people who really love that brand or that house or whatever, who are gonna pick up that limited edition fragrance every single year. I'm looking at you, CK1 Summer. To be fair to Isimiyake here, they have gotten three perfumers involved. So you may look at that and think, wow, I mean, sounds like they're really going hardcore with this one. Maybe it's gonna be great. They put this whole story together, different parts of the world coming together in one scent, each perfumer handling a different part of the world. Uh, you could also, though, look at that and think, hmm, three perfumers. Is that too many cooks in the kitchen here? So I guess we'll see how this one works out. Either it's going to be something where everyone came together and made something amazing, or it just became kind of muddled. And while we're on the topic of limited edition summertime flankers, let's talk about that new light blue. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I loved last year's release, light blue forever. I didn't have high hopes, didn't have high expectations, and it blew me away. I love Light Blue Forever. I think the grapefruit in the opening there is amazing. Rindy, sour, tart, sweet, fresh, all at the same time, very attention grabbing. Light Blue Forever, my favorite Light Blue, period, as of now. But before Light Blue Forever, there were some flankers that pretty much just sucked. I didn't like them at all. So light blue has been one of those lines where it's either, whoa, whoa amazing, oh, terrible, at least for me. And now I've got this new one coming out, light blue Italian love. And I gotta say, looking at the bottle, I like that they kept the cap style that they used 
in Live Blue Forever, which is the original Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme cap style. It's a very minor change, but it looks so much classier. This is what I'm talking about. This is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. You see this cap style, different from the ones that they had used for Light Blue prior to last year. It just looks nicer. It makes it look a little bit more high-end, ever so slightly. Light Blue Italian Love Pour Homme reveals a new interpretation of masculine sensuality with a fresh cocktail of Italian bergamot, and juicy frozen grapefruit at the top of the fragrance. It then develops into a new intensely masculine heart with invigorating green notes combined with the violet leaves and a fresh water wave of the ozone sea accord. Earthy vetiver intertwines with musk and the intoxicating mysterious note of patchouli, while the sumptuous note of Gaillac wood brings new depth and enigmatic sensuality. The bottle has the same unique shape as the cult classic light blue pour homme, but now reveals a more intense shade of blue as a reflection of the azure blue sea around Capri. So we've got a top of bergamot and frozen grapefruit amid of green notes, violet leaves, and an ozonic marine accord and a base of vetiver musk, patchouli, and guyac wood. Now that Light Blue Forever has come out and it smells amazing, of course, I'm very hyped for Light Blue Italian Love. Out of everything I'm talking about today, this is hands down easily what I'm looking forward to the most. My hope here is that the citrus in the opening doesn't come across smelling cheap, or overly synthetic or syrupy. Some of the fragrances in the past in this line, that's what has really turned them away from me or turned me off from them, I should say. If the citrus comes across very cheap smelling or like a cleaner product or anything like that, I don't want it. But last year showed me what they can do and I'm hoping they build off that and make something even better. So light blue Italian love, I've got to get it ASAP. Now let's go over the new Hugo Boss. This is Hugo Reflective Edition, and it comes in that little canteen. When I see a Hugo Boss fragrance in the little canteen, I automatically assume it's gonna smell probably fairly cheap. I mean, maybe that's, that's bad of me to say, but most of the fragrances, not all of them, but most of the fragrances that come in that style of presentation seem to be like the lesser tier, we'll say, of Hugo Boss scents. On the positive side though, those fragrances typically get discounted crazy heavily, which means once they do hit discounters and you can pick them up for $25, $30, something like that, they're a great deal. It's just at retail, a lot of times, these Hugo Boss fragrances in the canteen I try to stay away from. Let's talk about the scent though. Hugo Boss Reflective Edition Eau de Toilette for men who want to be the purest version of themselves every day. Representing the power of individuality, this fragrance features a fresh dose of citrus, invigorating cypress, and earthy vetiver, all in a mirrored glass bottle with silver logo. Top notes of citrus combined with refreshing eucalyptus and cooling mint, providing an invigorating twist. The powerful core of violet leaves, cypress, and notes of nashi pear give the fragrance a fruity boost that gradually reveals the warming vetiver and the ambergris accord for a decidedly masculine finish. So this one looks to have citrus, mint, and eucalyptus once again. So the second fragrance that we've talked about today with eucalyptus is one of the notes. And with that eucalyptus, depending on how it's used, but especially with mint in this fragrance, you could be looking at something that's invigorating in a Vicks Vapor Rub kind of way. Hopefully not, but it wouldn't surprise me. Vicks Vapor Rub Eau Fraiche. Then in the mid, you have violet leaves, cypress, and nashi pear. And in the base, vetiver, and ambergris. They are doing things a little bit differently with this one at least, so I can say that much. The note breakdown does have some interesting things going on. I can't imagine that I'll feel comfortable paying full retail for it, but I still do wanna check it out and see if they can manage to pull this off. And then last but not least, Kinzo Ohm Eau de Parfum 2022. Kinzo kind of changing and reviving their Ohm line. These new ones all have that new bamboo style bottle, which looks pretty cool. Looks like a piece of bamboo that's been sliced by a katana. Kinzo reveals its new addictive fragrance, Kinzo Ohm Eau de Parfum, a sensual interpretation of a leather heated by the sun's rays and illuminated with spicy facets. Quentin Bish signs this masculine fragrance with woody and salty notes composed of a marine accord, leather, and patchouli. The new black bottle with bluish reflections of Kenzo Omoto Parfum is an ode to poetry. Its vertical shape is inspired by the strength and flexibility of bamboo. 
So not too much to talk about in terms of the note breakdown here. A marine accord, leather, patchouli. The leather is heated by the sun's rays and has spicy facets. So there's some sort of spiciness going on here. We just don't know exactly what. Kenzo fragrances don't get too much hype anymore, too much love. You know, people don't look forward to them compared to the big dogs. And even though I didn't love the last Kenzo fragrance that I bought, at least it was different than the other fragrances that are coming out. So I'll give them credit for that. There could be a little bit of a comparison drawn to One Million Parfum here in that it's the same perfumer doing this Kenzo and they talk about leather warmed by the sun and then One Million Parfum, you have those you know, solar notes and leather that has kind of a, a beachy, sunscreeny kind of vibe to it. I would imagine this isn't going to go that route because it sounds like it's going to be darker than One Million Parfum is, but still kind of an interesting parallel to draw. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up this week in fragrance. Five new ones coming your way. Let me know in the comments the one that you're looking forward to the most. I gotta think most people are gonna say light blue. As always, thank you guys for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.